Hi, I'm Michael Odie, and I'm here with uh, Sean Doobie and Paul Therott for uh, the most recent episode of Windows IT Pro Insider. And today I think we're going to talk about a number of topics, but I think we'll start off by talking about um, some of our recent experiences at the Build Conference. And Paul, I know you've had a little bit of a chance to play with uh, the new Windows 8 client. What did you think of that? I think it's, I think it's great, but I, I, it, the funny thing in many ways is that on the, I guess it was the Monday or the Tuesday of the of the the week of build, I wrote an article uh, about how Windows 8 really doesn't offer a lot of new features for the enterprise, and then I had a phone call with Microsoft this week, and and now I have prepared with a very long list of features that Windows 8 brings to the enterprise. So I've been I've been reprogrammed <laughs> since, <laughs> since build. <laughs> so, yeah, you um, know, you know, enterprise capability wasn't what seemed to pop out at me. I mean, but no. the touch interface definitely did. I mean, the new Metro yeah. interface was definitely uh, something I, I had seen before. Yeah, there's a actually there's a touch based version of the remote desktop app built into Windows 8, which is pretty cool. Uh, and the touch stuff works through remote desktop as well. So if you have Windows 8 on the other side, you can actually inter you know interact with it with your fingers and all that stuff. But um, I'd also point out, you know, that this new Windows 8 star screen is present in server, right? And I'm sure if you guys, if yeah. you've looked at it yet, we didn't yep. see it the week of the workshop because they didn't have the full UI in there. Um, server still boots into server manager, but if you hit that start button, you don't get the start menu, you get the start screen. Yeah, I had that installed oh, really last night and I went to task manager and it, it came up and I was like, whoa, <laughs> yep. you want to reach out and <laughs> punch your fingers on that L your LCD. One of the things I think Microsoft really did right with this Windows 8 thing is to have the dual interfaces in there. The touch screen is obviously the way things are going to go for the future. I mean, I'm totally sold on that. I I wasn't before, but I was after seeing Windows 8 because I'm pretty sure that yeah. that, you know, it just makes a lot of sense. And after using it for a while, I thought, oh, yeah, this this is definitely the way that you're going to do things. But, you know, there is a transition period, and uh, I, we're in it for sure right now, now where most devices are not going to be touch capable. And having both UIs in there, the new touch one and the old one that made a lot of sense to me you know the, the the dark side of this is i've installed windows 8 on a variety of machines but i only have that one machine that has touch so i found myself you know reaching up to hit the screen <laughs> on these other things it's like right. it's not doing anything you know and you now well, you sort of expect touch i, yeah, I did it the opposite way I, I started on the touch screen one of their demos and, how do i make it work how do i make it work yeah, oh yeah. i'm supposed to touch it oh duh you know so i did well then it was the, 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 the Metro UI for the server, a lot of it just in file selection and all that is much larger. You know, it's, it's not nearly as detailed, which I think was going to have, and I haven't had a chance to see if there's a way to manipulate it. There must be. Mm -hmm. I think that's going to have some backlash because usually the admins, they want to see everything. They want to see that the attributes, they want to see when it was modified, blah, blah, blah. They want all the yeah. detail. Actually, the reason that's the way it is is... The, the Metro style apps can portray a lot of information through those live tiles, but the classic desktop apps can't. You just get the icon, and that's what you're seeing now mm -hmm. in this build. I, I think what we're going to see in the future, and I, I sort of envisioned this before I even knew it was going to happen, was this notion of that being a dashboard. And you'll see, hopefully, we'll see, Metro tiles that provide you with information about the health of your network, particular right. machines, you know, what the temperature is of the server right. and all that stuff. I mean, you can, you can see how that would work really well. I've seen a little bit of that on the, um, the the overall lock screen that right now is just shows you going down that highway, but it tells mm -hmm. you, for example, you've got a live network connection, which is kind of a nice little touch. Yeah. So. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see. Do you think the um, from the server, well, server and or client? I mm -hmm. know we had some complaints about the UI when we were at the EEC. Do you really think the UI is going to evolve very much, or do you think it's all going to be very fine touches? <laughs> well. Uh, one of the things somebody there told me, and, and they're right because it has changed, was that you know the the UI they showed us at the workshop was not complete because you know they're hiding the start screen and, and the, you know the new version of Arrow and all that stuff. So that's actually in the build, so you can see what it looks like, and it's fine. I, the big complaint that I had at the time of um, the server workshop was the I don't know what to call them, but basically the sub screens on Server Manager. You know, right, Server right. Manager now demands, uh, I think, a very big display, for one thing, for you to really be, be able to manipulate objects well. I, once you get into those sub-screens, it, it loses this sense of depth. You know, where you, on that main screen, I've got it up here, and uh, I have <laughs> lots of red error messages, which I'll try to, <laughs> to ignore for the moment. Um, 
you know, there's a, there's a nice contrast uh, just graphically, and it's nice. But once you go down into the subscreens, it becomes this really flat monochrome kind of thing. And, and, and there are boxes of functionality. And, and there's a weirdness to them because in a, in a view where the top box is the servers that you have in your environment, you can select one or more servers in that list, but then you can move down to the lower boxes and then act on those servers. And it's, it's a completely different way of doing things because if you think about how we interact with computers, you typically will click or right-click on an object, and then you get these options. You know? And now the options, you know, the tasks or the actions that you run against that object are, are visually separated in this UI. So it's a little bit of a... A little bit of a learning curve, at least for me. I, I agree with that. I think the those sub sub screens or inner dialogues they reminded me a lot of the the current stuff. So you'd go, so you were getting a change of paradigms as you went in. You'd see the newer stuff on yeah, the outside, yeah. but then those older inner screens were just like, oh, that's the old screen back in there. With a little bit of changes to it. Yeah, I, oh, I was but... mildly disappointed because I had just brought up the machine, and of course it wasn't domain joined, and I had this beautiful server manager and. Here are the next steps you could take and the roles you can add, except, well, I can't really do any of those steps until I muck around in the UI and figure out how to join the domain, which was the, yep. old, the old interface. Yep. So. And uh, there's also this notion, I'd have to, let me see if I can find it, God, it's, you know, learning new interfaces is the worst, right? But uh, right. the way that you add roles and features is a little different now. And the way that you create a domain, at least, I'm not sure about uh, joining a domain, but Creating a domain is now one kind of integrated experience. You know, before you oh, do right. promotion, it was right. a, a multi-step thing before. But they they have this notion of scenario-based installation of All that of roles and features now, which it still doesn't work. So the first uh, no, it actually <laughs> does work. So the very first you can't do it until you uh, join or create a domain. So the fir- the very first time you go through this wizard. That is not available to you. So I've never actually seen it. So actually, right now, uh, for the first time, I have seen this. Uh, I'm looking at it now, so this is maybe not a great time to talk about it, but we have this ability to do scenario-based installations, which I, I think is essentially, you know, instead of um, just installing a very specific feature or a very specific roles, a role, it would probably bundles a bunch of those things together into kind of a, a package. That would you know, make based sense. Based on whatever the scenario is, yeah. Right. Right, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I need to, uh, you're, you're reminding me, I need to install multiple systems so yeah. I can try the multiple, um, multiple exactly. UI management. But, you know, so far, I mean, it's all fairly, you know, this is all fairly niggling stuff in general. Um, I, what I've seen is pretty outstanding considering it's pre-beta, so. Yeah, well, That's, the capabilities are incredible. You bring up an interesting question, Sean, with the multi-UI management. You see new systems, would it work with older releases of Windows 8? What Do you remember what they told us in the workshop? Yeah, you know, that's a great question. I think the answer is no, because Server Manager is not remotable on, Windows, on, on R2 in 2008. So, um, yeah, right. I'll try it, but I don't, I it don't would expect seem it to like work. I I would expect that same thing. I think you're right because I think that they changed the way the server manager is connecting into the the servers it's managed than the older 2008 and R2 systems. Well, yeah, for us, go ahead. No, no, I go ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to say for us in our in our test systems, it's always this question of when do you take the jump forward and actually upgrade any of your real important stuff, um, sure. knowing that you may have to tear it apart. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you can't do it now, and uh, there is going to be, but there is not yet in this build the notion of a, a Windows Server 8 style forest, right? Uh, uh, right now, if you create an Active Directory oh, yeah. domain, it's only Windows Server 2008 or back. So it's kind of an interesting thing. You you create it to that functional level, but you probably I haven't tested that either, but I don't believe you can manage Windows Server 2008 or two servers from this UI. This is something we need to test. Yep. I'll do it right now. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I probably could do it right now. I am curious about that kind of stuff. But, you know, this is the learning process. You know, we, we saw a bunch of stuff. We couldn't get our hands on the code until pretty late in the week on during build, right? I think it was Wednesday, uh, probably when we got the build. But we were away, so, you know, there's only so much you can do. I, I made a point to download this stuff to my home servers 
so that I had it waiting for me when I got back. Mm. Uh, and I've got it installed virtually only, but maybe I'll, I want to put it on some physical hardware too, like Sean mentioned before we started taping, just if only to test Hyper-V. And, um, you know, you just have to, it just takes some time. You've got to put it through the paces. Sure. Right. What did Anything you think else? of the, the Slate device that you used at, uh, at Build? Or what were your thoughts about that? How does it compare to an iPad? Well, it's not an iPad. No. <laughs> you know, well, that's, that's uh, a lot right there. But, it, but, but it's also only a prototype. But, you know, it's a developer device. I mean, it's, it's a PC, so, and it's not a shipping thing. You know, the fan comes on. You, can, you know, it's a little thicker and bigger than an iPad. Um, I can imagine an iPad-like device running Windows 8, just the start screen part, I think would make plenty of sense. Um, and, I, I, and for whatever it's worth, and I, my wife is always kind of the litmus test for this kind of stuff, uh, she doesn't care about technology in the slightest. Um, her computer is about two and a half years old. I've been talking to her about getting a new uh, laptop, and she's not very interested. She doesn't really care. But I showed her this, and she actually really liked it and wanted one and wanted to know if there would be a version that was, say, seven or nine inches big on the screen size, and could I dock that in front of my big screen and keyboard and mouse and then carry this thing around? And I said, absolutely, that's, that is, in fact, the plan. And she said, okay, then that's my next computer. I want something like that. And that's fascinating to me, if only because she literally just doesn't care normally about right. technology. Yeah, you've, you've got your own hardest audience. Yeah. yeah that this was interesting. The white acceptance factor. When we were there, yeah. I, I saw, yeah, when they gave the devices away, I thought, oh, that's totally cool. What a great giveaway for those devices. And then the next day, I, just, I saw one guy using it. And I was thinking, whoa, what's up with that? You know, how come there's very few people using it? But then the, the day after that, everybody had them out. And so they, were, they obviously took a little bit of getting used to, but once everybody got the idea of it, they, they seemed to be yeah. pretty popular. It's possible well, that first charging. day they were all up in their rooms. <laughs> <You know. laughs> playing with them that could be yeah which is where i'm going to be once we get uh the rest of those reviewer workshop materials and vms and all that sort of stuff so exactly hopefully. exactly yep yeah so now we're in the phase of everybody diving in and playing with it and you're seeing it in the blogosphere that everybody is starting to dig into the builds and all that so that's um i'm looking forward to doing that too as far as you know as far as you can do in certain environments you can't really scale out very well but well mike could scale out probably but uh not me well <laughs> you have to put it on your stuff and yeah. get physical yeah. systems to put it on and that means one of my old systems has got to go <laughs> at least one. right i've got a it's i've got a circle rack hyper v server uh, right i've got a rack hyper v server mm -hmm. but you've got your own cluster mike if i'm not mistaken Oh, yeah. Wow. Are we really going to have this competition now? <laughs> Not with me. I'm already lost. Yeah. No, me too. Me too. But you, Paul, I had to move out of the house because the power requirements. <laughs> this is the only you know, We're heading into the time of year where my office starts to make sense because I can heat my office just with the machines. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know? I definitely do that yeah. in the wintertime, too. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it, we don't want to get into discussions of me routing air conditioning stuff down to the server rack because it, it is for the summer here. So, yeah, yeah. So, so what we're else, heading uh, in post build. What else? Uh, anything else that's we didn't discuss? I'm, it, I'm having a hard time even remembering what we talked about because it seems like it was three years ago. Well, it's, I know, it's been spread. so it's much been, information so fast. Yeah. It's been ten days. We got we got the server just shoved down our throat like we were being waterboarded and yes. then turned around and then had build from there. Um, I had a, while you guys were being builded, I had an interesting day or so talking to some people from a, a federal court, uh, talking to them about technology and futures and stuff. And an interesting uh, example, a real-life example of what we're talking about is how their IT is being pulled forward by their principal users, whether you consider them to be their, their executives or their tenured professor in academic computing, they're judges. The judges are the most important thing uh, in, these, in these federal court situations. And the judges are the ones with the iPads. They're adopting the technology, and they pick up Dropbox because that's the thing that works for them right away, and IT is scrambling to keep up. So uh, they're very much wrestling with the whole tablet mobility you know, dragging IT, screaming and kicking into the 21st century. 
it, that's the story of IT will once be will, will be written someday, and that will be the title: drag kicking and screaming into the future. <laughs> the story of that, IT. That was the uh, title of my <laughs> keynote. The title of my keynote was screaming and kicking. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very appropriate. <laughs> Well, okay. uh, I think we're you know we're all off to a series of strategy meetings uh, next yep. week. Uh, we are so actually, we'll actually be able to do a live show or a live recording, I guess, or an in person uh, recording. Paul will do the soft shoe, and Mike will do card tricks. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so we'll actually be doing this at the uh, Windows IT Pro offices in Fort Collins, and um, It'll yeah, probably it should be, be a very interesting week. <laughs> Yeah, That's it's right. still plenty warm gonna... in Dallas, but but uh, so yeah, so we'll um, we'll meet up again in a week, and we'll all be uh, cuddled up in front we of the a, gas We have a we have a similar place. server set up in in Fort Collins, don't we? To what Microsoft had at the EEC, kind of a, a bank of supercomputers behind us, kind of a Battlestar Galactica set. We must have something like that in Fort Collins, so we'll try Actually, to find the closest. <laughs> <laughs> it's either a there fish is tank or a, or a slide. <laughs> there is a slide. Oh, that's right. Well, maybe we could have some. Yeah, we could do uh, some slide slides. If well, that would be the good intro, could... wouldn't it? We could all we'd all come down the slide together. Not together, but in serial. <laughs> uh, we could do then it together. We could record. That... We could record episode yeah, seventeen of Windows IT Pro Insider, and then I'll go do hot yoga. That's the plan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe we, maybe we could do it from hot yoga. Uh, we'll even better. That'll be the surprise for next week. No video, right? Okay. okay. Well, I guess we're, I guess we're pretty much wrapped up. Well, thanks for attending this version of Windows IT Pro Insider, and uh, we'll see you soon from Fort Collins. <laughs>